Okay, so I guess we'll have a short one for Chaos Mesh. <laughs> Them. Yeah, I could. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right through the through the slides and show you a demo of how how this would work. Okay, so Chaos Mesh is uh, is a product that gives you the ability to perform uh, some chaos experiments uh, on either production or testing environments. It allows user to observe the state of the experiment itself in real time and quickly roll back any uh, injected failures. Actually, so. Chaos Mesh is uh, is based on on the uh, chaos uh, chaos principle. Uh, basically, you will randomly you will randomly uh, hurt your environment so so to to see how it will behave uh, under under this uh, uh, this uh, this event. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna skip this uh, one. Uh, Good point is to to so Chaos Mesh is designed uh, to be uh, deployed on distributed systems. It, in Kubernetes, it uses uh, custom resource defin definitions to to define the chaos experiments, and then you can uh, you can do things like uh, schedule uh, random random uh, uh, random events to to hurt your infrastructure, basically. Uh, hmm? Okay. Well, yeah, well, short with them. A bit about architecture. So we have a chaos dashboard, which we can use to to deploy this um, this events into our new infrastructure. We have some kind of a controller manager uh, that is responsible uh, to schedule and manage uh, the chaos experiments, and we have a daemon uh, that is run in Kubernetes as a daemon set and uh, interferes with specific network devices for uh, for hurting our our nodes in the in the environment. We have a, sp a specific daemon uh, chaos D. But uh, I, I guess we'll have to skip that part as well. So this is the, the architecture. This is the, the pipeline that we would use with uh, with uh, Chaos Mesh. A user will trigger some kind of uh, some kind of event or series of events. Uh, we can do it either through, through Chaos Dashboard. We can do some uh, uh, applying through through uh, client applications. So we can do, use kubectl as as our means to apply this. Everything goes through API server, of course, uh, which is extended with uh, custom resource definitions uh, from uh, Chaos Mesh. And uh, the control manager will pick up from there, and then it will uh, use Chaos Daemon or Kubelet to, to, to bring these events up this in the... the yeah. Okay, so in the when we when we trigger these events, uh, basically what will happen uh, if we do it in in a, a Kubernetes object, uh, basically the container will use either cgroup namespace, uh, IP set, IP tables, uh, traffic control, stress and GP trace or, or uh, fuse file system to to trigger these events, and the containers uh, obviously have to be privileged to do this. So this is some. Uh, some types of, 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 of faults we can we can trigger with uh, chaos uh, chaos mesh uh, pod chaos we can we can do uh, different events on, on pods which are the collection of containers inside Kubernetes uh, we can do some network chaos like drop packets uh, uh, do some disorder on the network uh, or network partitions we can uh, give faulty DNS uh, records. We can do some HTTP chaos stress. We can uh, like simulate CPU race or memory race or, or just overload the nodes or pods. Uh, I/O chaos will will give us uh, something. We can simulate an uh, I/O failure uh, of like an application file or do some read and write failures. And finally, we have time chaos, which will simulate the time time jump uh, on the nodes or or in the pods themselves. We have some platform and application faults. Uh, as far as platforms go, uh, they have an AVS and uh, GCP chaos, and uh, something for Java, JVM chaos. OK. Yes. When, until Micho prepares this, I can tell you that, uh, OK, you don't need to survive all the chaos techniques. It's not, <laughs> it's not the idea. It's the idea to see how your system reacts to chaos. You will not be able to prevent disaster in case of chaos. That, that's not the goal. The goal is to see how your system reacts to some kind of chaos or multiple things happening at once. Because one evil does not came, came al come alone, so 
mostly when you have some problem, you will have another problem and maybe another problem. So it's nice to see how your cluster and your application, your system reacts to some chaos. Okay, we're going to use the latest version. This is 2.2.0. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm going to use Helm. Uh, with Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes, and I'm going to use it to, to actually apply the whole bundle of uh, Chaos Mesh uh, parts into the, into the cluster. OK, we have a command we can run to see if everything works properly. So we have a controller manager, which is deployed on the control plane. We have uh, daemons uh, as a daemon set, which are deployed on all the nodes in the cluster. And finally, we have some dashboard we can use to, to trigger these events. Of course, you can trigger the events by planning the manifest, or you can trigger them uh, by using uh, chaos CTL. Okay. Okay, now he, now he will expose the UI, so he can show you some stuff that you can do via UI. So basically, if you can do it uh, by applying custom resources, you can do it on an automated way, so you can use Flux or some continuous integration to do this stuff. So you can do this stuff. So you can say, like, my application needs to survive some, let's say, DNS problems. You can run DNS problems inside your uh, continuous integration uh, pipeline and see if your application survives that. If it does not survive, it's, it does not pay, uh, pass the test. So you can simulate all kinds of things automatically. OK, so I have port forwarded the, the dashboard uh, just, to, just to be able to uh, access it on localhost. And we have this dashboard. It's, it's kind of nice, uh, simple, and yet, yet powerful, as they say. Uh, so basically, you have uh, something like uh, workflow schedules, uh, experiments where you can, when you can try try out the the different events you can trigger in the in the environment, uh, and you can also archive any anything you you've done and you don't need it anymore, but you want to pick it up later on. Uh, let's do some experiment. You can see I already tested this. Uh, some HTTP faults, uh, some pod. We can probably trigger this. OK, but I'm going to create a new one just so you can see how this works. Uh, let's do an experiment on Kubernetes. Let's do a, let's say, a pod fault. I'm going to have to apply the deployment first. We have a Nginx deployment we're using few replicas, and we will. No, you have you have three Nginx. So basically, simple a simple Nginx uh, pod, and we're going to try to hurt it a bit with this with this test. So we'll do a pod fault. Let's uh, simulate the pod failure. Okay. For the namespace, we're going to put default because this is the namespace where the deployment is. We're going to use app nginx as the selector since this is what I deployed with the deployment. We're going to test it something. Testing one, two, three. And we're going to run it for, let's say, two minutes. You can see uh, the, the pods of the deployment are already picked up, so we can just submit here. If these both are correct, we can just submit the, the experiment here. <laughs> Testing one, two, three already exists. Okay, because yeah. Because he, he clicked two times. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so and once you once you apply this into Kubernetes, you can see uh, what's going on in the in the events. You can also pick up the definition. This is a simple YAML file. You can. Uh, afterwards apply again if you need and things like that. Let, let's yeah, now we can see what's happening inside our cluster. Twenty eight seconds ago, so basically it will hurt for two minutes 
Sajnos a védestelős vagy. Just a, a quick overview of the other features. We also we can schedule these events to, to trigger uh, using a cron model, like every two minutes, every every Friday, and things like that. And we can do workflows where we can combine in parallel or in serial uh, way uh, a multiple multiple events, so we can we can make sure our, inf our infrastructure can withstand these uh, these failures. Okay, this this will trigger it just once, yeah. But just one, one, one yeah. Way, uh, one time so we can put uh, multiple time trigger or schedule trigger or random triggers. That's nice. We can put some time for some interval and say, okay, randomly between that time and that time, do some things in your cluster. For example, cut off the network or something like that. So you don't have really random uh, situations like for clusters. Yeah. Okay, and uh, just. Uh, to see what what else we can do here, you can you can hurt the hosts. You can trigger events on them. You can simulate some disk failures, uh, process interruption, stress tests, uh, clock skew, and things like that. And in Kubernetes, you can probably the things we already mentioned, right? So a lot of stress tests, clock skew. Best way is to just try to try to install it yourself and and give it a go. It's pretty simple, and yet it's it's powerful to to test the environment. Okay, so final touch is the workflows. You can uh, use a set of chaos experiments uh, to, to do application status checks, and uh, it enables you to perform a series of uh, chaos experiments. You can also orchestrate, uh, yeah, basically, I think I, I've showed pretty much everything. Yeah. Okay, so now we are back on that slide that we skipped. Uh, we are hiring, so if anybody wants to uh, work with us on cloud technologies and everything else we, that we are working on, uh, if you have experience or if you have some enthusiasm about uh, cloud and Linux and open source things, drop a note and we can discuss about that. Opa. That's the last slide. So we. Uh, one more thing about Chaos Mesh. The, today we run a stress test on our poor test nodes uh, on our test cluster, and we <laughs> killed two nodes, so we needed to reboot them. We, we could not uh, to, uh, talk to them. And uh, while we were doing that, we were also running some other stress tests and testing the Flux, so we also killed one master node. Uh, API was unresponsive for some time, but uh, API uh, came back few seconds few for few a few seconds later it were it was uh, responsive but when the test stopped that node also recovered uh, even if cluster was like totally blind about that node the cluster didn't even know resource utilization or anything else so that node was basically out of cluster but it uh, recovered and uh, it was brought back in so if you have a lot of uh, resource stress on your nodes there is a big chance that your node will recover after that uh, high load, you don't need to kill it and uh, pray for it to uh, start again. So, so test it on testing environments and then go into production with the workflows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yo, yes, don't don't do that on your production uh, cluster because it 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 was like okay, just a two cores and a few gigs of RAM. No, it was enough. Thank you. Uh, if you have some questions, we would uh, be glad to uh, to answer it, answer them. No questions. Okay, so <laughs> we can discuss later or tomorrow if you if you have uh, any questions or uh, anything else to ask us. Thank you for your attention and uh, see you again. Thanks. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now we will hold a small break for 25 minutes. So the next track begins at 4:45. Thank you.